good morning everyone and welcome to the class yesterday we were discussing about uh, the common uh, but differentiated responsibilities and in that context we have discussed about the q2 protocol uh, which is based on uh, that principle only that uh, all the states all the countries have a uh, common responsibility but uh, this uh, um, responsibility is uh, different for different type of countries and uh, one more thing which is uh, you must know and you must keep in mind that uh, the provisions of uh, or the terms of uh, the kyoto protocol is binding on the member countries they have to uh, obey the uh, terms of the kyoto protocol and it is also uh, one of the relevant uh, issues that because of uh, uh, the terms of uh, Kyoto Protocol, it became, um, nowadays you must be uh, hearing that uh, the hole in the ozone layer, which was uh, there, uh, uh, it, now th that hole is uh, um, getting smaller. And uh, the reason behind uh, uh, this is uh, the Kyoto Protocol only. Because of uh, the terms of uh, Kyoto Protocol, the uh, different member countries, the signatory countries, have uh, adopted such policies which uh, uh, were binding on them. And because of uh, those uh, um, binding policies, uh, the level of uh, pollution decreased so much that uh, today we are uh, um, facing this uh, that uh, the hole is uh, getting smaller. So this is uh, really uh, very good for our environment. Now uh, we are uh, moving to new uh, subtopic that is common property resources. We have discussed about this uh, common uh, resources earlier also that was uh, in the context of uh, the whole world. If we see in the context of a country, the common property are uh, um, those uh, places which are not in the control of any particular person or individual, but the whole community is uh, the owner. And uh, in India, we have uh, the common property, which is uh, which are very uh, popular. These are known as sacred groves. These sacred uh, groves are mostly found in South India. And uh, now what is... Uh, important to know about uh, these uh, sacred groves uh, as the name suggests these are sacred uh, people consider that uh, their ancestral spirits are living in those uh, groves and because of uh, that feeling because of that thinking uh, people uh, want to protect those groves people uh, make some laws make some rules uh, people assign some duties uh, to the um, member um, members of the community in order to protect those uh, sacred groves. And uh, um, one more thing that uh, um, the government is not there to make uh, rules for the protection of these sacred groves. The community itself is uh, responsible for the protection of uh, the sacred groves because they are... Uh, um, feeling of that uh, uh, their ancestors are uh, living there because of that feeling they are protecting the groves and uh, in this way um, they are uh, helping in the environmental matters so uh, this is uh, one of the important aspect of uh, uh, this uh, natural resources now uh, we will uh, move to a new section that is india's stand on environmental issues um, what is uh, uh, what India has done in order to improve the environmental condition of the world? Actually, uh, India has been uh, an active member in international politics and whatever, whenever uh, is done on global level, India was there. India signed and ratified the 1997 uh, Kyoto Protocol in August 2002. So India uh, is a part of Kyoto Protocol and um, in this uh, Kyoto Protocol, uh, we have discussed right just now that developing countries were exempted from the requirements of the Kyoto Protocol. It does not uh, put any kind of uh, limitation on the developing countries like India and China because they are developing. There is a need of development 
their development is not complete uh, and in this situation they cannot be put under they cannot be put under limitations if they are put under limitation then what will happen that their development their economic development their industrial development will be obstructed so uh, the kyoto protocol is uh, uh, not to uh, to obstruct the industrial development of any country but it is uh, there to uh, improve the environmental uh, condition of the whole world and for that it is putting limitations only on the developed countries and uh, not on countries like india and china which are developing countries so uh, mm, these countries are not very much responsible for uh, the greenhouse gases it is believed to be um, the greenhouse gases are uh, causing very much global warming and climate change and uh, these countries like china and india are not responsible um, are not uh, as much responsible for the emission of greenhouse gases as the developed countries are so um, this is done by kyoto protocol india has adopted it and um, ratified it and uh, there are many critics of uh, kyoto Pro protocol who are uh, of the opinion that sooner or later both india and china along with other developing countries will be among the leading contributors to greenhouse gas emission so uh, the critics are saying that uh, at present they are not uh, contributing to the greenhouse gas emission because of their development level they have not reached that development level that they can contribute um, contribute more uh, to greenhouse gas emission but uh, very soon the time will come when countries these developing countries uh, will become the leading contributors so uh, um, when then at that time you will put limitations on uh, the activities of these countries so better you should start uh, putting limitations on these countries from uh, the beginning only so uh, at the g group 8 meeting in june 2005 india pointed out that the per capita emission rates of the developing countries are a tiny fraction of those in the developed world Uh, it is a fact that uh, country like india developing country like india uh, is uh, responsible for a uh, very less amount of uh, um, emission of global uh, greenhouse gases but uh, um, the developed countries are uh, very much responsible for uh, the larger part of the greenhouse gas emission so uh, if we are going to follow the principle of common but differentiated uh, responsibility india um, has uh, india is of the view that the major responsibility of curbing emission rate uh, emission rest with the developed countries it is uh, the responsibility of the developed countries to curb the emission of greenhouse gases because they have accumulated emissions over a long period of time um, for the last uh, almost around 200 years uh, their um, industrial activities are going on and going on and because of these uh, industrial activities they have accumulated emission and they are responsible for the uh, deteriorated condition of uh, Uh, environment and they should pay for that only not uh, the developing countries should pay for that um, poor condition of environment okay so this is the view of india india is completely with the kyoto protocol india uh, india's international negotiating position relies heavily on principle of historical responsibility as enshrined in unfcc it is um, it um, believes in the principle of historical responsibility history uh, uh, we have to see the economic history of uh, different countries and accordingly their uh, responsibility can be fixed developed countries are responsible for most historical and current greenhouse emission is still it's not that only uh, in the um, in the previous years only Uh, that these developed countries have 
contributed in the greenhouse gas emission but actually at present also if we compare uh, both the countries the developed developed countries and the developing countries uh, we will find that uh, um, currently also these countries these developed countries are um, responsible for uh, uh, greenhouse gas emission they are releasing uh, this gas in large amount so economic and social development are the first and overriding priorities of the developing country parties the countries which are developing they have the uh, most important aim in front of them is economic development and social development economic uh, development for the development of economy what is required industrial development is very much required and when economy will develop then only we can think of development of society so these two aims are the most important aim in front of developing countries and in order to achieve these aims um, there cannot be uh, there cannot be put limitations uh, uh, by the international treaties uh, in their uh, in the achieving these, these goals so india is wary of uh, recent discussions within unfccc about uh, introducing binding commitments on rapidly industrializing countries india is considered as a rapidly industrializing country because after the um, new economic policy of uh, 1991 india adopted uh, liberal liberalism liberalized uh, um economic uh, policy was adopted by india which was based on privatization and globalization and because of uh, these changes in our economic uh, policy what happened uh, that uh, industry started to grow at a very rapid rate and uh, the same condition is prevailing in china and brazil also so uh, uh, there are some countries which are of the opinion that uh, these rapidly industrializing countries uh, are uh, emitting greenhouse gases in large amount and so uh, there is need to put some binding limitations on these countries they should also follow uh, some rules in their uh, industrial activities so that this emission of greenhouse could be reduced but india uh, does not uh, support this view india feels that uh, contravenes the uh, very spirit of uh, unfcc this is uh, not the uh, true way of thinking because we are developing countries and uh, we have still a long path to go and uh, no uh, there should not be any limitations should be uh, there no limitation should be put on uh, countries like india uh, which will make uh, us uh, difficult to achieve uh, the goal of economic development so uh, this is the opinion of india neither does it seem fair to impose restrictions of india on india when the country's rise in per capita carbon emission by 2030 is likely to still represent less than half the world average of 3.8 tons in 2000 so this is a very important data and you have to uh, analyze this data what is it saying it is saying that the world average of per capita carbon emission what is the world average of per capita carbon emission it's 3.8 tons in 2000 in the year 2000 Uh, per person in the world on an average it is, it is the average on an average per person is emitting 3.8 tons of carbon okay and now according to the um, whatever uh, uh, data had been collected and uh, uh, it is it has been predicted that uh, by 2030 india the per capita carbon emission uh, way of india uh, will be less than half of this 3.8 tons means in 2030 by 2030 uh, in india 
per capita emission of carbon will be 1.9 tons half of 3.8 that is 1.9 tons so at present the world average is 3.8 tons per capita carbon carbon emission and if by 2030 india will reach 1.9 tons so there is no need to put restrictions on the economic activities in india because india is not responsible for uh, the greenhouse gas emission india indian emission are predicted to rise from 0.9 uh, tons per capita in 2002 1.6 tons per capita in 2030 so it's not actually 1.9 1.9 was half mind the term less than half i'm telling you you can see it here less than half okay so uh, uh, what is uh, the per capita carbon emission in 2000 world average is 3.8 tons and at present india in india we are emitting 1.6 tons per capita no at present it's 0.19 tons per capita and in 2030 uh, it will increase to 1.6 theek hai so uh, 0.9 ton hai aaj uh, in 2000 and it will increase to 1.6% in 2030, 2030. so uh, the contribution is of india in uh, the emission of carbon dioxide is very less and there is no need to put restrictions the indian government is already participating in global efforts through a number of programs moreover uh, uh, india is uh, helping india is doing so many things uh, in order to uh, so many things for the um, uh, improvement of the condition of uh, environment for example india's national auto fuel policy you uh, remember one thing that nowadays environment has become the most important concern concern of the humanity okay so there must be a question from this chapter uh, uh, india's uh, effort what india has done in order to make the environment uh, pollution free or what is the contribution of india in the um, upgradation of environment so these are very much important uh, questions and these are your uh, important points india uh, has adopted a national auto fuel policy which uh, mandates cleaner fuels for vehicles um, the uh, fuels which are uh, clean for the environment that should be used by the uh, vehicles the energy the second thing is this the energy the energy conservation act it was passed in 2001 and uh, it outlines initiative to improve energy efficiency energy efficiency means uh, less energy should be used to produce more energy should be used in an efficient manner so that it should not be wasted then there are another act that is the electricity act of 2003 electricity act of 2003 this encourages the use of renewable energy the, there are two types of energy you are knowing renewable and non renewable so Uh, the electricity act of 2003 which encourages the use of renewable energy and government uh, gives so many uh, concession so many uh, encouragement policies are adopted by the government if you are using renewable energy like solar energy wind energy tidal energy all these are uh, mm, the forms of renewable energy so uh, government is uh, working in this direction recent trends in importing natural gas and encouraging the adoption of clean coal technology so that india has been making real efforts
so uh, india is importing natural gas also and it is encouraging the adoption of clean coal technologies uh, these are the efforts by the government of india uh, in order to make uh, uh, the environment pollution free especially the we are talking about the air so uh, the government is also um, it has not launched but it is about to launch a national mission on biodiesel a national mission of biodiesel under which about 11 million hectares of land uh, will be used to produce biodiesel by 2011 12 and india has one of the largest renewable energy programs in the world so uh, biodiesel uh, do you understand the meaning of biodiesel what is biodiesel biodiesel is a uh, diesel uh, is uh, made of uh, natural uh, petroleum and uh, petroleum is a non renewable uh, resource now we are talking about biodiesel uh, it is a uh, uh, plantation of uh, jatropha is done and uh, uh, that jatropha is used for producing the diesel so uh, what we are doing we are uh, producing diesel from the plant so what uh, form of uh, energy will be uh, this this will be renewable kyunki plant hai it will again grow and grow and in this way uh, the diesel is becoming biodiesel so Uh, government is about to launch this uh, um, this uh, national mission on biodiesel, uh, and uh, uh, it will use 11 million hectares of land to produce that to get pro farmly. So uh, these are the effort by our government to improve the condition of the environment. A, re- a review of the implementation of the arrangements agreements at the earth summit in rio was undertaken by india in 1997 the earth summit was held in 1992 and uh, india uh, has uh, started to see the uh, whatever the agreement was uh, achieved in the earth summit uh, how they are implementing uh, we are able to implement that or not so india has made effort in that direction also and conclusion was that there had been no meaningful uh, progress with respect to transfer of new and additional financial resources and environment friendly technology on concessional terms to developing countries what is the problem with the environment that if we uh, do something if we are supposed to do something if we are um, under the limitation under the uh, foundation of uh, uh, using cleaner technology in order to make our environment clean uh, we are supposed to use new technologies okay now what is the problem with the developing countries we are not we don't have that type of technology we need to uh, get these technologies from the developed countries moreover uh, when we uh, suppose uh, an industrial unit is uh, going to be made environment friendly it is the uh, according to the terms of uh, any international agreement uh, uh, we are supposed to make uh, um, our industrial units uh, eco friendly so in that way in that condition what uh, what we have to do we have to uh, use some technology some machines which are eco friendly and we are lacking that uh, those machines we need technology from developed countries not only technology these machines these uh, uh, changes whatever changes will be done in order to achieve the eco friendly atmosphere in the industries uh, this will improve the cost of production because uh, uh, these are uh, very um, uh, these are very uh, we, are, we are not affordable financially we will not be uh, able to afford these uh, technologies so there is not only technological problem financial problem is also there and it was uh, one of the 
uh, terms of the earth summit that uh, the developed countries it is the responsibility of the developed countries to provide additional financial resources and environmentally sound technology on concessional terms to developing nations but what uh, when india uh, started seeing uh, the implementation of the terms of earth summit it found that developed countries are not transferring any financial resources they are not transferring any environmentally sound technology on concessional rates to developing countries so why how developing countries will uh, adopt these environment friendly process they will be uh, obstructed because of lack of technology they will be obstructed because of lack of finance so it is the responsibility of the developed countries to provide all these things to the developing countries but it is not done by the developed countries india finds it necessary that developed countries take immediate measures to provide developing countries with financial resources and clean technology to enable them to meet their existing commitments under unfcc we cannot uh, they won't be able to meet the um, commitments if the developed countries are not transferring Uh, the technology and giving the financial aid so india uh, is supporting the cause of the developing countries india is also of the view that uh, the sar countries should adopt a common position on major global environmental issues so that the reasons voice carries greater weight so india has always uh, believed that uh, uh, we cannot do uh, alone anything if we want to do something great then we need to unite and uh, one of the most uh, um, glaring example of uh, this thinking was the starting of non aligned movement by pandit nehru in the same way at present uh, india is of the opinion that uh, if we want to do something uh, uh, noticeable in the environmental uh in the environmental upgradation then uh, what should we do we should uh, start doing uh, collectively all the countries of south asia south asia association for regional cooperation that is sarc all the countries of south asia should uh, unite and should adopt uh, a common position and when we will adopt a common position then what will happen that whatever uh, is the opinion of this uh, uh, group of countries that opinion will be will have the weight will have the value and the whole world will um, take attention of that opinion so it is uh, the india's contribution in the direction of environmental upgradation in the direction of environmental conservation so uh, now we have uh, another new topic that is uh, environmental movements one or many so in under this chapter under this uh, segment we will uh, learn about uh, various uh, environmental movements and the most uh, badly affected uh, group by this uh, uh, environmental uh, uh, by by the uh, industrial activities uh, the when the industrial activities badly affect the environment and because of uh, the degradation of environment the badly affected group is who are the um, group who is badly affected with by this environmental degradation it is the tribals the indigenous people they are the uh, badly affected people because uh, they are living in the forest forest is uh, the place from where where all the needs are uh, getting fulfilled so their life is uh, very much uh, become troublesome because of uh, environmental degradation so uh, in the next class 
uh, we will read about all these uh, environmental movements and um, for today is it this is your all class okay now we will meet tomorrow